Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Darren, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at what Rogue Specs are like on the new patch 8.1 with the brand new gear coming out January 22nd. So with the new raid, we'll actually have a whole gear overhaul. We'll have brand new pieces of gear, more trinkets and more weapons for us to test with. So all the interesting stuff that I want to test today, I want to test out on Outlaw Assassination Subtlety. I want to test out all the specs, hit a train dummy for a little bit, then give you guys a little bit of my idea how I think those specs will fare as the game goes on with this new patch. First of all, one of the biggest parts of January 22nd you'll notice is a lot of your gear that you'll get after 22nd. So the gear you're wearing right now is not going to make any changes. As far as we are to understand, we're going to have an extra external ring for our specs. Now, not a lot of people are super excited about Azeroid trades, but I think what they offer has a chance to make the specs feel a little bit more unique, a little bit more complex than they have been. But even then, this whole system is going to get overhauled come patch 8.2 for even a better system. So this is going to be, a, I feel like, decent band-aid to hold us over until the real content comes out. Once patch 8.1 raid comes out with January 22nd, it should more look more along like this. It should have a lot more rings available, actually four different trades that you can slot in. On the outer trade, it should be an option between two spec-specific ones. So we have for here, assassination spec-specific, outlaw spec-specific, and subtlety spec-specific. Then once you select one of these, you're going to have the inner ring, the second row of rings, with a middle ground trait and one for each spec. Then, of course, you're going to have, like, the Overloading Power, Earth Link, and such. You're going to have your general defensive stuff in the, down in the inner side. And then, of course, Azure and Empowerment at the very end of it. So, it should offer a little bit more complexity to a lot more specs. So, for example, as an Outlaw Rogue, I'm going to be stacking Deadshot times 3. This seems like to be, like, the strongest trait on the PTR right now. And I have it in all three pieces of gear. But now, since I have this best trait that I don't have to give up traits for, now I can customize my character and add a little bit more flavor. So, in the headpiece, for example, I decided to go with a new trait called Treacherous Covenant. While primary stat, your primary stat is increased by an extra amount while you're at 50% health. So as long as I'm not dropping below health, which is easy in dungeons and raids, Treacherous Covenant is going to give me extra agility. But in PvP, this would be a terrible trade because once you're below 20% health, you take 15% more damage. In a raid or a dungeon where you can account for the damage and it's kind of pre-planned, in PvE situations, I feel like this is going to be a lot easier to manage. In PvP, however, this is going to be a terrible trait, just saying this right now. In my shoulder, I decided to flavor up myself with Ace Up Your Sleeve. Extra damage on between the eyes, so if it crits, it does a little more damage, but now it also grants 2% chance per combo point spent to grant me 4 combo points, so at 5 combo points, has a 10% chance to grant me 4 combo points back. It's a pretty good way for me to watch out for my combo point generation and regeneration. Brigand's Blitz is going to be another one that I'm going to add to my spec because having the Hazy on Adrenaline Rush will just simply increase my damage output. So I have this main trait that's going to let me do most of my damage. I'm going to have that with all three specs right now. And I'm going to have an extra trait to add a little bit of flavor to my spec and how I'm currently playing it. Another thing I want to test out while I'm here is the trinkets. I'm going to have Harlan's Loaded Dice and Kettleball Runner, which are not all that different. I'm going to have a boss and croc toss to see just how much damage that does as a decent one-hander weapon that I've been rocking from the beginning of BFA, basically, ever since I got one in a Mythic Plus dungeon. And the new weapon called Dalen's Proud More Saber with combination with the Lord Admiral's Signet, which is a ring. Your auto attacks have changed with the Rhyme of High Seas dealing frost damage. So I want to test out how good this weapon is at 415 item level and if it's going to be a must have for any one handers. In stats it gives Master and Crit which is kind of a loss for Outlaw but I still want to try it. Alright, let's take an opener with the Trading Dummy as an Outlaw Rogue. I'm going to go for a v uh, Ambush Vanish Ambush Killing Spree in the opener to get the most damage. We're going to get a Roll the Bones. We got a Crit Buff which is really good. We're going to start building the Common Points, get us as a Between the Eyes, Pistol Shots, and we'll kind of see what the damage is going to be after hitting the Trading Dummy for a bit. One of the things you guys will notice actually, which I was a little bit disappointed, is with Command Commandant's Frigid Winds. It doesn't do nearly as much damage as I hoped it would. I was thinking it was going to be some insane trade for PvP maybe, or a must-have at one point or another, but it looks like it is just a fairly decent, not really a, an effective trait whatsoever. Maybe having both of these as a Windwalker, I feel like might give you more or every auto-attack, like an extra 
fro uh, icy hit. Maybe if you have a one walker build that is all heavy about auto attacks, maybe something with haste or some kind of a attack speed increase of some sort, then I could see it do a lot of damage, but on its own it just doesn't do much. Also for stats it's not insane, so if you're wondering if that's going to be an insane weapon, doesn't look like it. Outside of that, how did an Outlaw perform? It feels like it's a really good spec for single target, but of course it's going to be insane for any AoE. But how does it perform in single target? I feel like it has a sustainable playstyle. I'm hitting between 19 to 20k, depending on my buffs, depending on my procs, but my pistol shot is what's carrying majority of my damage. So the triple stack of the pistol shot with high item level is gonna allow your outlooks to have a little bit extra burst, a little bit extra kick to maintain decent DPS. Now the spec has basically zero burst DPS when it comes to your cooldowns. You can get some bursty hits depending on your procs, depending on your buffs, depending if an ability crits. Outside of that, there's no real way to increase your burst unless you're combining trinkets together with killing spree, for example. So it's actually a very strong spec, but a lot of it is going to play around pistol shot. I feel like pistol shot is going to make it a lot stronger with spec, especially if you can be gear heavy. Outside of that, in AoE, as long as you have keep your wits about you as a trait on any piece of gear, Outlaw is going to dominate, completely decimate the competition in any situation where an enemy comes in, even for just 20 seconds, Outlaw is going to blow everybody out of the water, as this spec simply does more damage the more enemies are around you. And it's a very much a burst DPS when it comes to AoE, so you can get a lot of your value damage out very early on. If you like Outlaw for its playstyle, single target damage is not going to make you fall too far behind as long as you're keeping up with your gear and have the right traits. I feel like the spec is going to be exceptional in any burst AoE situation. It's going to be a must have for Mythic Pluses and a must have spec for any fights that have more than one target, especially when you're doing progression inside of raids. It's a very powerful spec, but I think it is going to be very much a trait dependent spec. If you have triple deadshot as a playstyle, then you can make single target work. If you have keep your wits about you, you can make your AoE work. Outside of that, I feel like without any traits, the spec is decent. It plays more or less the same with the new gear, and I don't think a lot of you guys will notice much difference if you've been enjoying it so far. Alright, on to assassination. Just to make sure I don't mess this up, I'm going to have my poisons up. Take a look at the spec. We're not really going to change much. We're going to go for haste heavy crit gear for mostly PvE situations. Uh, maybe we could even replace this. Nah, we'll keep it as is right now with verse crit. That'll be okay. Just to diversify gear. Because whenever you go into a raid, whenever you go into a dungeon, you're not going to be able to just have all the best stats. So we might as well have a piece of gear that's like yeah, a little bit of verse. Not insanely good for single target, but more realistic numbers that we're able to output. But I want to go for assassination. It's a very bursty build with a Garot Shroud Suffocation. Nothing personal in the first piece of gear. We're going to go for double dose for single target and shroud suffocation. And we're going to go for overall double personal, double shrouded, one treacherous, and one double dose. That's kind of how we're going to set ourselves up. And I think it would be a very, very interesting build. We are going to go for, because of that double shrouded suffocation for exsanguinate for more damage. Elaborate planning, vigor, poison bomb is fine. And I think we're going to be good from here on out. So as long as I don't mess up, my opener should be an insanely bursty opener right now. I think Assassination spec in terms of single target damage is the strongest spec, especially if it's a fight that's a prolonged fight, but also in fights where burst damage is needed. Maybe there's a moment where an enemy or a boss takes more damage for a short moment, Assassination can sink incredible cooldowns into the enemy, but also can get incredible damage into an opener. The spec has an all-in, very, very handed burst play style that's up every two minutes. Outside of that, it does a fair decent damage of maintaining its DPS. Basically, the play style is to burst the enemy as hard as you can in the opener, trying to cripple them as much as you can, and then trying to hang on to that DPS over time. So of course, the spec, since it's more bursty, it doesn't have nearly as amazing of sustain, but with how many windows you have for your burst, you should be able to maintain your DPS fairly high. With more options for traits, you're gonna allow assassination to be an incredible spec when it comes to AoE, Mythic Plus, or raid situations. By being able to buff your Garot openers with triple shroud of suffocation and being able to buff your Phantom Knives damage with triple Phantom Knives trait, you're gonna be able to get out great, incredible sustain AoE damage on any trash pack in a dungeon. 
I feel like in this season for Mythic Plus, PvP, as well as a brand new raid season, I guess in a sense, Assassination is simply going to be bringing more of what it was good at, except it's going to be even better at it. So in any single target situation, this is going to be the spec a lot of you guys will want to grab for progression. When you're doing any kind of boss fights, that burst DPS will let you see a lot more phases as you progress through the fights. Outside of that, I feel like Assassination will be the default spec if you're not sure whether you want to play Assassination, Outlaw, or Subtlety. The strengths and weaknesses to every one of these specs, and I feel like Assassination has always been the balance in the middle. Great AoE pressure, being able to deal with more than one target with garrotes and bleeds, and of course being able to sink incredible single target damage into a single foe, like a boss, or maybe an enemy in a trash bag that needs to die as a priority. Finally, we're gonna take a look at subtlety spec, and we gotta get our subtlety gear first. We gotta do a few things here. So we're gonna take a look at the traits themselves for subtlety. What I really wanna see is a bursty mastery capped spec with as much mastery on your gear as humanly possible. That's what I'm more interested about subtlety. I always love the bursty playstyle. Even when like sustain your build is better, I still would prefer to play the bursty build, especially in AoE situations. So we're gonna play a very bursty version of subtlety. We're gonna go for inevitability as the first choice in the row. We are gonna go for treacherous covenant for extra agility, just so we can get the more value out of the damage. We're gonna go for earthlink again to amp more of our agility. Self reliance is a decent trait, and of course, as right empowerment. In our shoulder piece, we're gonna go for first dance because the amount of damage you can get with first dance is nuts and it's ridiculous. Then we gotta go for Knight's Vengeance just to give ourselves a little bit extra, I guess, value whenever we have Night Blade and Next Eviscerate. This is gonna do even more damage. I haven't really got to play with this trait all that much, but it should be a very interesting trait. We're gonna go for Elemental World because Crit, Master, and Versatility all will increase the damage output potential for our Eviscerates. Resonant Protection is a decent trade to go afterwards, and then of course, Azure and Empowerment to buff everything else. In the chest, we are taking a look first of all at what traits we have. We are going to go for a double first dance so we can get extra amounts of haste during our burst to get more value out of it. And we are going to go for inevitability to increase the damage of our Shadow Strikes during our burst. Since we are going for Mastery Heavy Playstyle, we are going to go for a Blood Siphon. Footpad, I think, is going to be a decent option for more defensive value and, of course, Azerite Empowerment. For our weapons, we're going to want to go for Masterful Navigation and I'm pretty sure Deadly Navigation is going to be the best second option. And then, of course, we need to enchant our rings with Double Mastery to get more value out of our Mastery damage. So, by ourselves, we can get about 81 percent mastery this is the type of number you would get inside of old deer or even much higher inside of old deer so imagine this this is how much mastery you can get by yourself in an opener most of our gear has mastery heaviness with a little bit of crit heaviness too so we can reach that 20 percent crit chance let's take a look at some of the other things for the spec that we can do in terms of the traits we are going to go for secret technique uh, we are going to put it at a t actually we are going to go deeper strat. I think it's going to be best with Prayer in the Week. We are going to go for Shadow Focus, Fine Weakness to get the most single target PvE damage out there. And all we're trying to see just how much burst we can do with Subtlety during a big burst combo. You guys ready? Thirty eight k burst in the opener as Subtlety. I like it. I very much like it. So we actually are able to maintain about 23k DPS with this right now, and I'm not playing this optimally either. But what I wanted to test is just how much burst damage you can get out of it, and by god, the big old eviscerate in there. 145k! Yeah, if you can play around this, you can actually let that ability do most of the damage for you. You can let it eviscerate do insane amounts of damage. Actually, how much damage does it do? Hold on, let's go for a full 6 comb point night blade to see how much my eviscerate would hit. Just letting the components regen. It's going to be about 541 damage, it looks like. But I feel like if you can line up some really bursty setup with this, if you can get some kind of a rotation going, which I'm not used to playing around Knight's Vengeance, and I think not a lot of people are used to with that either. Actually, no, let me go over and grab a trinket. I do need to grab a burst trinket for this, because I feel like you can make some insane damage out of this. Here is the Trinket Vendor, and we are going to grab ourselves Sinister Gladiator's Badge. We need that in order to get our damage going out, and we are going to put it here, and we're going to add it here. So now we just got to make my, our way all the way back to the train dummies again. 
there are trained dummies here in PvP, but they take a lot more damage, so they're not gonna give us the most accurate numbers out there. Alrighty, so I'm gonna start my burst opener. I'm gonna go with a Shadow Strike, or Shadow Dance, Shadow Blades, Shadow Strike, Night Blade, probably pop my trinket and then go for some big damage. We're gonna see just how much damage this is gonna do all together. So popping all this together. Big AoE. Gonna go for a big eviscerate. Big eviscerate again. Big eviscerate. And here we go. 43k worth of DPS. 43k burst. So we can probably go even bigger. We can probably go even higher. How hard did that hit? Not even all that hard. Secret Technique is where most of the damage came from, though, it looks like. So we are waiting out for our Symbols of Death to be back up again. So we are gonna go right now for big burst. Shadow Strike, Shadow Strike, maybe another Shadow Strike in there. Big Eviscerate, maybe? Yeah, let's go. I like that. Gonna re blade the target to maintain it, and this could actually be some really nice birds to build. I feel like if my stats were a little bit more aligned, you could... <laughs> I just saw 100k worth of mastery just now. And that's without any kind of regeneration array to help me in old deer. This is gonna be insane, man. I feel like Subtlety is gonna be such a good spec. I know that they changed it up a little bit in terms of, uh... It's AoE potential damage, but I feel like the spec always scaled really good with gear. So as we're getting much better gear, we're just going to see subtlety just outperforming the other specs very quickly. So this was actually the most fun spec for me to play around with on a train dummy in this new season for PvE slash PvP. Subtlety is a spec that always scaled better with gear, and it's been a spec that performed really well as of recently. But this spec does incredible amounts of damage with the brand new gear. And I'm going for a bursty playstyle, trying to see some big numbers out of single target. So I'm very happy with the results because I always love this bursty playstyle of a subtlety rogue. And I honestly think that this spec is going to pull the rug out of majority of the specs. As people get better gear, a lot of people will transition into subtlety eventually as the main choice, at least for PvE. Whether it is going to be a PvP choice, we'll just have to wait and see. To answer the question, I don't think you have one spec of rogue that is the best. I feel like they are all equally good. I feel like the whole class as a rogue is in a really good spot. And you don't have any weak specs really. You have Outlaw which is, has decent single target and exceptionally good AoE damage that it maintains from other patches. You have Assassination which is still the king of burst single target damage. And then Subtlety which has a versatility of either pure single target sustain playstyle or burst your playstyle whether it's an AoE situation, whether it's single target, feeding off common points off of enemies around you. So all three specs of rogues haven't really got changed at all and with a brand new gear with how much you can customize and add on to them with new traits I feel like you can actually have some very fun and unique playstyles. You can make assassination a little bit stronger in AoE so you can be competitive to outlaw. You can really just pump single target damage with triple deadshot for outlaw so you can stand toe to toe with the other specs on single target. And then there's subtlety with a lot of different traits that are getting changed. Small updates that we even haven't seen like the Nightblade one where Nightblade deals more damage for your next eviscerate. Those little things are still getting changed on PTR. But overall, all three specs are looking really good. I think it really honestly comes down to the personal preference. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for checking it out. Let me know your thoughts. Which spec rogue is looking the best for you in this new patch? Let me know in the comments down below. Again, I appreciate all of you guys for coming out. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see all of you in another video.